After the end of World War II, the Soviet military had officially replaced their war-winning T-34 medium tank series with the T-54 family. These were then upgraded with NBC protection and a slew of other features to become the T-55 series a short time later, intended to counter the new, interim American developments. Going beyond simply upgrading the T-55, work also began on a new tank design based on the same proven T-54-T-55 system though intended to house a more powerful 115mm main gun. To fit the new armament, the base T-55 had her hull lengthened and given an all-new turret assembly designed specifically for a high-velocity smoothbore 115mm main gun, the U-5TS, 2A-20 Rapra. This weapon was of particular note for it marked the first time a production combat tank had been given a smoothbore barrel, to this point, all combat tanks fielded a rifled barrel, the Soviet direction proving a major upgrade to the 105mm rifled main gun being fielded by the new American M60. The new Soviet tank was christened the T-62 and production of the type resulted in deliveries occurring in July of 1961. For all intents and purposes, the T-62 was more or less a further upgrade of the T-55 itself with the T-54 still serving as the true starting point for the family. As such, the type delivered roughly the same utilitarian appearance of its originator as well as the follow-up modification. The tank sported a low-profile design with a center-fitted turret emplacement. The glassy plate was very shallow and well-sloped for excellent point ballistics protection. The sides were dominated by the track system encompassing five road wheels to a hull side. The drive sprocket was held at the front with the track idler at the rear. Like the T-54 and T-55 before it, the T-62 lacked any track return rollers along the upper track region. The single diesel engine was held in a rear set compartment and could generate its own smokescreen as needed. The turret was well curved and squat in its general appearance, housing the 115mm U5TS main gun armament as well as three of the four crew. The crew consisted of the driver in the front left hull and the tank commander, gunner and loader in the turret slash middle hull region. The turret was protected by up to 242mm of armor thickness along the front facing. A pair of external fuel tanks could be fitted to the rear of the hull for improved ranges and jettisoned when empty. The main gun was fitted with a fume extractor and featured two-axis stabilization for adequate firing on the move. The main gun was also given case ejector actuated by the recoil action to which spent shell casings were ejected automatically out of the turret rear via a spring-loaded door after firing. The main gun was supplemented by a coaxial 7.62mm PKT series machine gun in the turret for anti-infantry defense. A 12. 7mm DSHK anti-aircraft heavy machine gun on the turret roof was optional and not generally seen in early production units. Up to 40 by 115mm projectiles were carried aboard, stored within the turret itself and primarily along the hull sides. 2500 by 7.62mm rounds of machine gun ammunition were also carried for the coaxial machine gun. Power was derived from a V5512 cylinder diesel engine outputting at 580 horsepower. This supplied the vehicle with a top speed of 31 miles per hour on ideal surfaces with an operational range of 280 miles not including environmental factors. The main gun was cleared to fire the requisite high explosive, he, and armor piercing, AP, projectiles of 115 mm caliber. The he breed consisted of the HEFRAGFS, which stood for High Explosive, Fragmentation, Fin Stabilized. The Heat FS rounds was the High Explosive, Anti Tank, Fin Stabilized variant. The AP round was the APFSDS Armor Piercing, Fin Stabilized, Discarding Sabo. Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? This projectile video. could range out at targets up to 1,100 yards away and penetrate up to 330 mm of armor plate, a major upgrade from the projectile types fired from the 100 mm main guns of the T-54 and T-55 series. The main gun held an elevation limitation of minus 6 to plus 16 degrees. One of the key limitations of the T-54-55 models were their lack of true hull-down firing due to the main gun's depression restriction. The T-62 improved upon this limitation to an extent. The T-62 was delivered with several notable standardized features including NBC, nuclear, biological, chemical, protection for the crew as well as an automated fire extinguishing system which could also be manually actuated. 
An integrated snorkel could be erected prior to entering bodies of water and provide the T-62 with limited amphibious capabilities. The engine was used to generate a smokescreen, this essentially accomplished by injecting raw diesel into the engine for the desired result. The commander, gunner and driver positions all included infrared night vision devices for true day-slash-night fighting capability. To keep the tank from becoming bogged over a trench or obstacle, a unique unditching beam was fitted under at the rear of the hull. Despite its improvements and advancements, the T-62 eventually showcased several limitations to her design. The new advanced tank proved more expensive to produce in quantity, derailing foreign interest, they being content in keeping slash producing slash modernizing their T-54 slash 55 series still. The lack of T-62 large-scale interest ultimately forced T-55 producing factories to continue serial while T-62 was ultimately discontinued. Furthermore, the original Russian engines proved unreliable and crew protection was lacking as combat would soon show. In the T-62's first combat actions during the Yom Kippur War of 1973, the tank shown a tendency to catch fire when hit, making the T-62 a threat to its own crews as much as any Israeli tank. As with the T-54 and T-55, hundreds of T-62 tanks were captured by the Israelis from the Syrians and Egyptians, modified and reconstituted to fight against their former owners. Israeli versions sported improved armor protection, American-based power plants and technological additions such as laser rangefinders and thermal imaging. Such modified T-62 tanks were designated as Tehran 6 in the Israeli inventory and proved greater in value and quality than the original design. Unmodified captured Israeli T-62s were known under the Tehran 3 designation. The T-62 fared no better in the 1982 Libyan invasion of Chad, where large numbers were destroyed or rendered inoperable. Despite the limitations in combat, the T-62 went on to see its fair share across decades of service. The type was showcased from the 1969 Sino-Soviet border war onwards. This would include the Ethiopian Civil War of 1974 to 1991, the Angolan Civil War of 1975 to 2002 as well as the Soviet-Afghan War of 1979 to 1988. The tank was featured in the bloody Iran-Iraq War of 1980 to 1988 and in the Lebanese Civil War of 1982 to 1983. Iraqi T-62s were also thrown into the fray during the 1990 to 1991 Gulf War which saw Saddam Hussein's forces routed. Russian T-62 use extended to the First and Second Chechen Wars of the 1990s. Afghan T-62s were in action during the 2001 United States invasion and Iraqi T-62s were once again fodder in the 2003 American invasion. The 2008 war in South Ossetia brought the T-62 into the forefront once again and the type was utilized in combat as recently as the 2011 Libyan Civil War which saw an end to Muammar Gaddafi's tyrannical reign. Operators went on to include Afghanistan, Algeria, Angola, Belarus, Bulgaria, Cuba, Egypt, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Kazakhstan, Lebanon, Mongolia, North Korea, Russia-Soviet Union, South Ossetia, Syria, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Ukraine, United States, op for training only, Uzbekistan, Vietnam, North Yemen-South Yemen and Yemen. Poland, Czechoslovakia and China all evaluated the T-62 but did not purchase the series. The T-62 family ultimately consisted of a myriad of production variants and upgraded types. The T-62 a designation marked modified T-55 prototypes with their 100mm main guns. T-62 was used to designate proper initial production models and these fielded the 115mm smoothbore main guns. The T-62K was the command tank variant of the T-62 production model. The T-62KN was similar though with expanded equipment. The T-62K introduced the capability to fire the A-3 Sagar anti-tank missile launcher. In 1967, the T-62 was upgraded with a modified engine deck design. In 1972, the series brought about use of the 12.7mm DSHK heavy machine gun at the loader's hatch to counter low-flying aircraft threats. A new drive sprocket design was also introduced. In 1975, the series was given the KTD laser rangefinder over the main gun. The T-62D was delivered with the Drozd Active Vehicle Protection System in 1983. This version also was given a new V55U series diesel engine as well as applique armor protection. 
The T-62D-1 was similar though finished with the V-46-5M diesel engine. A modernization program yielded the T-62M of 1983. The fire control system, FCS, was upgraded and applique armor was now standard. The suspension system was improved and tracks developed for the new T-72 series were instituted for the T-62 line. The hull floor was protected from landmines to an extent. Additional improvements netted new stabilizers, thermal sleeve on the gun barrel, sights, ballistic computer, external smoke grenade launchers and support for the A-10 Stabber anti-tank guided missile. The T-62M appeared in the T-62M-1 form fitting the V-46-5M diesel engine as well as the T-62M-1 with revised front-facing armor and lack of anti-tank missile firing capability. The T-62M1-1 was finished with the V-46-5M diesel engine while the T-62M1-2 lost its anti-mine protection as well as applique armor. The T-62M1-2-1 was delivered with the V-46-5M diesel engine. The T-62MD utilized the Drozd Active Vehicle Protection System as in earlier designs. The T-62MK was the command tank version. The T-62MK1 was similar in function though delivered with the V-46-5M diesel engine. The T-62MK was another command tank version with additional equipment. The T-62MK1 was similar though with the V-46-5M series diesel. The T-62MV was given Contact 1 series explosive reactive armor ERA, blocks. The T-62MV-1 was similar though fitted with the V-46-5M diesel engine. The T-62M-1V lacked its anti-tank guided missile capability. The T-62M-1V-1 was given the V-46-5M diesel engine. The T-62-122 was a combat engineering vehicle CV, variant fitting a 122mm howitzer gun system. The T-62-160 was a combat engineer vehicle fitted with a 160mm mortar for demolition work. The T-67 was a variant fitting the 125mm main gun of the T-72 MBT as well as its engine and transmission system. The T-62 was a flame-projecting tank version which still retained the 115mm main gun. Obiect 167 was a prototype model fitting a V26 series engine with a 700 horsepower output. Obiect 167T fitted a GTD 3T series gasoline fueled turbine engine. The T62 was later modified into a dedicated tank destroyer with an all new turret design lacking its 115mm main gun. In its place was a 2K8 series anti tank guided missile launcher. These eventually became armored recovery vehicles in the IT-1T after their useful battlefield lives were expended. This also included the similar BTS-4V-BTS-4U models as well as the BTS-4V-1. Damaged T-62s that could be salvaged were also converted into ARVs under the BTS-4V-2 designator. A lesser-known T-62 variant was the Impulse 2M firefighting vehicle. Bulgaria designated their T-62s as TV-62. Modified ARV forms took on the designation of TV-62M. Egyptian marks included the RO-115 MK-1, T-62 EMK-2, and RO-120 MK-3. North Korea based their CH Anmahol line of tanks on the T-62 and covered the 1, 2, 3, 4 and V production marks. Ukraine T-62 modernization produced the T-55 AGM mark as well as the T-62 AG series. Production of the T-62 spanned from 1961 to 1975 to which over 22,000 examples were ultimately produced, well short of the numbers posted by the preceding T-54 and T-55 series which, collectively, numbered between 85,000 to as high as 100,000. Production was also undertaken at Czechoslovakian factories though these were delivered for export only. North Korea produced a local version under license as well as a lighter version of the T-62 designated as the CH Anmahoi GA. Czech production spanned from 1975 to 1978. The T-62 operated alongside the T-55 it was intended to replace. It was formally replaced itself by the newer T-72 series to which the T-55 soldiered on even after the T-62 was dropped from service in the Red Army.